I'm Liz Davey, and I'm a member of the Garden Club of Norfolk. National Seed Swap Day has been designated as the last Saturday of January each year. For the past few years, the Garden Club of Norfolk has hosted a public program of seed swapping and winter sowing, usually at the library or the grange. This year, because of COVID, 19, of course, we can't get together for that event, but we thought we would share with you some tips about things you can do in planning your garden for next summer. We've been happy to cooperate on this with the Norfolk Public Library and NCTV, who is helping present this program. Today, I'm going to show you a way to start your garden a little earlier than usual. No, it's not time to plant your tomatoes yet, but there are some things you can plant, and that doesn't mean inside either. It's called winter sowing, and to do that, I'm gonna make myself a little uh, mini greenhouse with a milk, water, or cider jug. This happens to be a cider jug. I'm using a one gallon plastic container. The ones that are opaque, the ones you can't see through, are not good for this. They, they need to be uh, the clearer, ones. I'm going to start by poking holes, and I'm using an old ice pick that I inherited. To poke holes, top and bottom. This is very important. I'm also going to poke one hole, which gives me a spot to put my scissors. Now you can use a nail or scissor or a sharp screwdriver and all, whatever you have that will make those holes. And I'm going to cut around this about a third of the way up from the bottom. And at the handle portion, I'm going to leave an inch to half an inch to make a hinge so that the top won't blow away once I've gotten it planted. The next thing I'm going to do, and again, those holes in the bottom are really important. I forgot it on one of mine and it flooded out over the winter. So always remember to put holes in the bottom. I'm gonna add some seed starting mixture. Now you can use potting soil, but you don't want one that has fertilizer in it. The seed starting mixture is specifically designed for starting seeds and it doesn't have any weed seeds in it, which is a plus because sometimes you're planting things and you don't know what they're going to look like. And you really don't want to keep growing weeds and taking good care of them when you can be growing nicer plants. I'm gonna flatten the uh, seed starting mixture and I'm gonna be planting common milkweed. This process is very good for starting seeds like milkweed and other native plants as well as very hardy perennials. And also you can start now broccoli, kale, cauliflower, cabbage, and those types of crops, which are very cold hardy. Kale also. I'm gonna just sprinkle these seeds. I don't want them too thick because I usually have pretty good luck with the germination. And then since they're a larger seed, I wanna cover them with about three times their uh, depth in soil. And then I'll just cover them with a very light coating, coating of the germinating soil. This is available through many garden centers. And the seeds are available through the garden centers and also your public library, seed library. The next thing that's important to do is to label. And I like to label it both inside and outside. And because uh, Sometimes the labels wear off over the winter. You can even bury the label if you wish. And I'll put that label in the pot, and then I'm gonna close it. And then I'll label the outside as well, so that I can see what I've got without opening it. And 
the next step is to use a piece of duct tape or packing tape if you wish. And tape it shut in one spot. You don't need to go all the way around because later on you'll be opening this up. Now you'll notice I also have the cap off the, the bottle and it's ready now to have a little water poured in if your soil wasn't very really damp. And then I'm going to set this outdoors. Yes, it's still cold. It gets down into the teens at night. That's okay, it's going to be just fine. You don't need to cover it up with anything. No straw, no blankets. Just put it out, set it in a place where it won't get knocked over. I usually put mine next to a fence out near my garden. A sunny spot is good as well. I'm gonna put these out into the garden and then I'm gonna forget about them. Rain and snow will come as they usually do and water these containers. And when it's time for that milkweed to sprout, it will do so, and I'll have nice little plants to set in the garden later on, probably about the end of May, maybe early June. You can also do this with some vegetables, and I've set up another uh, container. I can use a half-gallon container as well as a gallon if I only want a few seedlings. I have tried the quart containers, and frankly, they do not work well. They are too small, and they tend to tip over. So quart containers really are not very useful, but the half gallon work just fine. And this one I'm going to use to sow a few broccoli seeds. These are kind of tiny, and I want to space them out as much as I can. Again, you'll appreciate that when it comes time to removing them from the container you don't have a forest of seedlings. Again, and I've already put the holes in the container, top and bottom. I need to put a little soil over it. Again, these are tiny seeds. They need only about a quarter of an inch. And pack that down. My, my soil is quite moist. If it were not, I would water them. I could water them in any way. But uh, then we'll close it up. We've got our label inside. I'll put my label on it. This is Green Super. And then tape it shut. It's really easy to set up a number of these containers with wildflowers, perennial flowers, and vegetables. Right now, in January or February. Now when March comes along, you can sow some other plants, things that are a little less winter hardy. That would include marigolds, zinnias, impatiens, and that sort of thing. On the seed packets, it sometimes lists those plants as sow as soon as the soil can be worked. In April, you can start sowing this way with peppers and tomatoes. Again, you kind of follow the season with them. One of the big advantages of doing the winter seeding or seeding in these little cartons is that you don't have to harden the plants off. If you start seeds inside, you have to go through the process of hardening them off, which means taking them in and out of the house for a few more hours each day until they're ready to stay out in the sun all day. With this, you uh, leave them out in the garden, and as spring wears on, and you have some nice warm sunny days, that's the time to cut this tape and open up your little greenhouse and let the plants get the full sun. In no time at all, when the weather warms up and things start to grow outdoors, you'll find you have one day, a whole lot of seedlings coming up in your milk cartons, and then a little later on, you'll be able to transplant those into your garden and get an early start on your garden without too much effort and taking up too much space under plant lights indoors.
Now we're going to hear from some other folks in the Garden Club and at the library about the seed library and other things you can do this winter to start your garden early. Uh, my name's Stephanie Markham. I'm with the Garden Club of Norfolk. And we're talking about seed starting. It's the middle of winter. It's January. And I have an alternative way of starting seeds of winter hardy perennials and some um, cold weather annuals. But what I'm going to be doing today is planting some, um, some hardy perennials. The thing about hardy perennials such as purple coneflower, the seeds of which I saved from my own garden, and butterfly weed, also saved from my own garden. And one of my favorites, it's a very tall root Beckia, also known as cut leaf coneflower, um, with a big green eye, is that they all need cold stratification. And in order to do that, you need to plant them late fall, early winter, and let them sit out all winter and get and go through the freezing and thawing and get watered so that the seed coat will um, break down enough for it to germinate in the spring when it gets warm. So the way I do this is um, I use all the leftover pots I have from my many, many purchases and I use just a regular potting soil, nothing fancy, just a regular potting soil. This is damp. And I put the seeds, this is my cone flower, sprinkle a few seeds, on, spread out on the top of this potting soil. Not too many, you don't want it too crowded. Maybe about a half an inch apart in there if you can manage to space them out like that. So that there's room for each of the seedlings. And then I'll put a little more potting soil over them. Just enough to cover. Pack that down. And where it goes is here in my little germination area, just outside. And I cover it with, in my case, salt marsh hay, but you can use straw or hay, as long as it's not full of weed seeds. Or anything you want. Yeah. Put tag, which has the common name on one side, the Latin name on the other, in the pot so that I know what I planted here. I have a lot of these pots. Here's another one. This is butterfly weed. Beautiful orange milkweed that the monarchs, caterpillars can eat. We grow a lot of this in the Stony Brook Garden and the um, H. Olive Day School Garden. And I grow a lot of it here too. It really does attract the monarchs because they can lay their eggs on it and the caterpillars when they hatch get nourishment from the milkweed leaves. It works just as well as common milkweed and is a much better behaved garden plant. So I've covered those seeds in just a little bit of soil. It's just regular potting soil. I've got my label, which has the common name on one side. The 
botanical name on the other side. Put that in the pot. And I put it out here in my germination area for the winter. Covered with a little bit of salt marsh hay. Or you can use straw, or you can use hay, or whatever you want. Just to keep it from heaving out of the pots during the freeze-thaw cycles we get in our winters. And it's as simple as that. In the spring, um, the hay comes off. I usually take about three quarters of it off really early, like March, and the rest of it off in April when things really do start get going. Just in case we have a late frost. And by spring, things will be popping up. In addition to the seed growing area, my little nursery for the stuff that requires cold stratification, I have an actual cold frame. This cold frame is a pretty fancy one. It's made out of UV stabilized polycarbonate rather than glass, which would be a lot heavier. And um, it's also got an automated lifter inside, which means that when the temperature gets too warm in there for the plants that are inside, in this case, anywhere near 70, it starts to lift up the opening automatically so they don't cook in there. It's very handy to have. If you do have a cold frame and you're manually lifting it up, you've got to be very careful to watch the weather to make sure that you understand when it's going to be too hot and when it's going to be too cold so that you prop it open when it's too hot and make sure it's closed up when it's too cold. The other thing to think about when you've got a cold frame is to remember that you need to make sure that it faces the sun. This is facing south, basically due south, and it gets all the possible sun it can from the sides, from the front, and from the other side. Some people also put a heat sink in the back. I have tried it by putting Coke bottles with dark colored water in them um, so as to have a heat storage area in the back, which will also make it a little warmer inside if you're using a cold frame through the winter. Here I'm starting seeds of things like kale and lettuce, which can be started very early indoors and then put out into the cold frame before you would normally do it. This is damp potting soil. Again, just normal potting soil. And I'm using my arker, which is basically just a Sharpie, to poke little holes so that I can plant these seeds. They don't go very deep. I usually try to get at least two seeds per cell in these. Uh, because you never can depend on 100% germination. Sometimes it's more. And then when they germinate, I will thin them to one plant per cell. This row is going to be kale. It's a kale called Red Russian. And that's one row of my cells. I've also got some nice lettuce here. I find if you get a really early start on the lettuce, you get more lettuce. It has a tendency to bolt when the weather gets hot. So the earlier, I'm getting way too many seeds in here, the earlier you can get it planted, the end, the earlier you can be harvesting it, the less likely it is to bolt. One note about labeling your um, tags on your seeds, anything that's going to be kept outdoors for any length of time, you need to do, use some sort of marker that isn't going to fade in the sun. I used to use plain old Sharpies, and then I found these Sharpie Industrial Super Permanent Ink ones. These ones don't fade in the sun. The other Sharpies do. You leave them out for a whole year, the labels that is, they'll start to fade, and then you won't know what you've got planted where. Unfortunately, it's too cold outside, really, to try and start 
my lettuce and kale seedlings, even in a cold frame. So to give them a head start, I put them under grow lights. I'm just going to put them in here and then they will sprout here once they're up and sprouted. I can put them out in the cold frame. It'll be warm enough for the seedlings. And uh, by that time, it may be time to start the tomatoes and other vegetables under lights down here. The vegetable gardens are sleeping this time of year, but I did plant a cover crop of mostly winter rye. Actually, this is a combination of winter rye and clover so that in the spring, when I till that in, it will provide nutrients for the next crop of vegetables to grow here. Last but not least, I have a new experiment going. I hope it'll work. Last summer, late last summer, I planted carrots right here inside this fencing. Fencing is to keep the rabbits out. And they got to enough of a size that I could have some, but a lot of them didn't really get very big before the frost set in. So I decided to treat this as a more or less a cold frame area. The ground is frozen, but the carrots are under a blanket of hay, salt marsh hay, because that's what I have. A nice deep blanket of hay. What I hope will happen, and in theory what should happen, is that in the spring when the ground thaws enough so that the carrots can start growing again, they'll get a head start on the season, and I will be able to go out under this hay early in the spring and harvest yummy new carrots.